All right, this is the big one, folks. Best picture of the year. What's important to remember here is that the winner is determined by a preferential balloting process, which gives a huge advantage to the most generally agreeable films that rank highly on many ballots. With that in mind, let's take a look at the nominees. The first one is 127 Hours, brought to us by the Oscar-winning team behind Slumdog Millionaire. The film is an innovative and energetic interpretation of the harrowing five-day tribulation of Aaron Ralston, who got his arm trapped beneath a boulder while canyoneering in Utah and could only free himself by cutting it off. Through the frame of this remarkable true story, director Danny Boyle delivers a message about the importance of not alienating oneself from society. It's a very creative effort with an uplifting cadence, but it probably will not win. I imagine there are many Academy members with more sensitive tastes who could be turned off by the film's graphic depiction of Ralston's amputation. Some may not have even bothered to see it. It won't do well by the preferential ballot system. I rank it as the 10th most likely to win. The second nominee is Black Swan, a dizzying psychological thriller about a ballerina who starts losing her marbles as she struggles to attain perfection in dancing the starring role of Swan Lake. By virtue of brilliant photography and sound design, director Darren Aronofsky doesn't so much show us her descent into madness as he does immerse us fully inside her chaotic mind. It's a movie about the artistic process and sexual repression and self-esteem and much, much more, held together by a strong, sensual performance from Natalie Portman. But however enthusiastically I sing Black Swan's praises, I think it's actually in a pretty weak position in this race. It is a genre movie and that puts it at an immediate disadvantage with the Academy. It'll receive a lot of first place votes from its supporters, yes, but probably won't rank very high on the ballots of more conservative voting members. I rank it as the sixth most likely to win. The third nominee, which I consider a possible Dark Horse contender, is The Fighter, the inspiring true story of pro boxer Mickey Ward, and how he picked himself up from less than ideal circumstances and slowly but surely inched his way toward boxing glory. It's pretty rousing stuff. The film is filled with great performances, most notably from Christian Bale, Amy Adams, and Melissa Leo, all of whom are nominated, and features some hair-raising boxing sequences. The film is generally liked by most people, which means it'll end up on the top half of many ballots. It also has key nominations for directing, writing, and editing, which are an absolute must for any film that wants to win Best Picture. I rank it as the third most likely to win. The fourth nominee is Inception, Christopher Nolan's dazzling cerebral action flick that impresses the senses, the mind, and even the heart. It's essentially a reinvention of the heist movie, wherein a team of specialists delve into dreams within dreams within dreams, with the goal of planting an idea deep within their target's subconscious. I think this would make a very worthy winner myself. High-concept Hollywood blockbusters as original as this are a rarity nowadays, and I'd love to see Nolan win something for putting it all together. But that's not going to happen. There are just as many people who found Inception confusing and convoluted as those who found it ingenious and inspired. It also has the genre bias working against it, and the fact that it was snubbed for Best Director and Best Film Editing, both of the nominations that were expected and deserved, is a telling sign. I rank it as the eighth most likely to win. The fifth nominee is The Kids Are All Right, a wonderful comedy drama from writer-director Lisa Chilodenko about the complications that arise when two teenagers track down and welcome their sperm donor into their family. I was very struck by the authenticity of this film. The characters are realistically written and perfectly acted. The screenplay finds humor and heartbreak in believable situations to which the audience can relate. The Academy usually finds room for a smaller, lighter film such as this one in their Best Picture lineup every year, but they almost never win. In addition to that, The Kids Are Alright doesn't look like it's poised to win any of its other three nominations, making a Best Picture victory all the more unlikely. Still, I find it hard to believe that too many people would really dislike this film, so it should find a decent position on some ballots. I rank it as the seventh most likely to win. The sixth nominee is The King's Speech, the historical drama about how King George VI overcame his nervous stammer to unite England on the precipice of World War II. This is your winner, a traditional piece of good old-fashioned Oscar bait, well-acted, handsomely produced, droll, uplifting, and to top it all off, backed by a smart awards campaign by crafty executive producer Harvey Weinstein. In other words, this is a movie designed to win Oscars. 
But that's not to detract from the quality of the film itself or the talent involved, for it is indeed a fine piece of work. It's not at all staunch or stilted like the sorts of prestige projects the Academy's gone for in the past. Rather, it's a satisfying picture about a touching friendship and overcoming personal obstacles. I personally don't think it comes close to being the best of the year, but still, as far as best picture goes, the Academy could do a lot worse than this. Everyone likes this movie. It'll be near the top of many ballots. I think it's the most likely to win. The only other nominee that even comes close to challenging the King's speech for the best picture title is our next nominee, and my favorite movie of the year, The Social Network. It's a brilliant character study about a socially awkward misfit with ambition and genius to spare, but with a severe inability to form and maintain meaningful human relationships. On top of that, the film touches on how new technologies have influenced the way our society functions. Yes, they may be bridging gaps, but they may also be putting up invisible walls between us. After it opened way back in October, the social network was declared the early Oscar frontrunner. Till January, nearly every critics group in America had named it the best picture of the year. Unfortunately, being the early frontrunner is seldom a good thing. And sure enough, when it lost the Producers Guild, Directors Guild, and Screen Actors Guild awards to the King's speech, it became evident that the industry clearly wasn't as over the moon about this movie as were the critics. But I still think it's the second most likely to win. Our eighth nominee is Toy Story 3, the lovely final chapter of the franchise that kick-started Pixar's dominance in the animation market 15 years ago. It's every bit as funny, clever, thoughtful, and poignant as the preceding Toy Story movies, and it packs an unexpectedly powerful, emotional wallop. It's still the only movie of 2010 that managed to make me cry, and any movie that can bring people to tears should always be considered a formidable awards contender. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to win, of course. The Academy has always been biased against animated films, and so long as they have a separate category to recognize it in, I doubt we'll ever see one win Best Picture. But even though Toy Story 3 won't win, I dare say it might come closer than we would think. Just about everyone loves this movie, and I think a lot of voters will have it in the top half of their ballots. I rank it as the fifth most likely to win. The ninth nominee is True Grit, the Coen brothers' take on Charles Portis' western novel about retribution and redemption. Rather than give us a highly stylized or dark revisionist western in the vein of, say, No Country for Old Men, the Coens took a very conventional approach to this rip-roaring adventure that suits it quite nicely. It's impeccably paced and beautifully crafted, featuring great performances from all. It's a fabulous popcorn movie that you just can't help but enjoy. It came out late in the year, around Christmas time, just at the right moment to grab the Academy's attention. They clearly loved it, as its swapping ten nominations, which includes Best Director, would suggest. I rank it as the fourth most likely to win. And finally, we have Winter's Bone, a gritty independent film from writer-director Deborah Granick about a determined teenager on the hunt for her missing father in Missouri's Ozark Mountains. The film benefits from a commanding lead performance courtesy of breakout star Jennifer Lawrence, and does an effective job at immersing the audience in its chilly environment. It's the sort of movie that probably has a small but passionate cheering section within the Academy, which helps it to a nomination and will help it acquire first or second place votes. But I suspect it will be lower on the ballots of the rest of the Academy. It is a modest and very bleak film that just can't compete with the sweeping popularity of its fellow nominees. I rank it as the ninth most likely to win. We're almost there. Tomorrow I wrap things up with a recap of my predictions in all 24 categories.